YouTube channel or welcome if you're new. So right now I am starting the prepping process of reopening my Etsy shop. There's a lot that goes into it and a lot to consider, so I thought I'd bring you guys along with me so you can see just what I do to prepare to reopen my Etsy shop. Around the holidays, I like to close my shop down for a little while. So I did close my shop down back in December just before the holidays and it's been closed ever since. My intention was not to have it closed this long, but I really needed to just rest and relax for a little while, enjoy my family. I do have a 19 month old daughter that takes up a lot of my time, so I really can only run my Etsy shop in my spare time. So I really enjoyed this time just being with her and not having to worry about anything else. My husband also started a new job and all the things. I also needed a little bit of a mental health break, Running your own business can be a lot sometimes, especially with everything else that you have going on in life. And so I really love what I do, but it was really nice to have a little bit of a break and just be able to be with my family and just focus on other things. So I have really enjoyed that, but I am ready to get back in the swing of things. I haven't been completely away from my shop this whole time. I have still been working on listings and SEO and things like that. Just kind of getting myself ready to reopen eventually. A few things that I like to do whenever I am getting ready to reopen my shop is just go through all of my product listings, make sure that everything is accurate and updated, make sure that all of my pricing is still competitive and not too high, not too low. I also like to go in and look at my SEO, make sure that that is still all good, maybe update a few things there, decide on what I'd like to keep selling, things I don't want to sell anymore, things I want to retake photos of, I also go in and do an inventory of my whole shop. So I go through every item and make sure that I have things in stock. And if I don't have enough of it or if I don't have any of it, I will go ahead and place orders for things just so I can go ahead and fully stock my shop for the next few months. In today's video, you're going to see me make a new color chart for my shop. I wanted to add a few new paint colors to my shop and get some colors that I didn't really see very many other people selling. So today I'm going to be going to Lowe's to pick up a few new paint colors. I'm also going to be trying a new type of paint. I actually went there about a week ago and I got two samples of the same paint that I'm going to be getting today and I tried it out on some acrylic and I love it. It's literally like house paint. So I'll show you guys exactly what I get and I'll also link down below the same type that I have so you guys can look it up if you want to. But there are a ton of colors. It's so thick that you usually only have to use one coat depending on how light or dark the color is but I am in love so I'm gonna go back today and pick up some more colors that I really want to add and then I'm gonna go ahead and make my color chart tonight so I'll take you guys along with me while I do that all right let's head to Lowe's It is now a little bit later. We got the baby to sleep and now I'm going to go ahead and get started on some work for tonight. So um, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how I make my color charts. And what I mean by that is here's my current one. Um, this is the one that I made back when I first started doing acrylics and I wanted to go ahead and update it. So this is what I do. I just like kind of paint a little bit of each color on a piece of acrylic so that the customer can see exactly what it would look like on the clear acrylic. I know some people make digital paint swatch um, charts through like Canva and PicMonkey and things like that, but I like to have it on acrylic. That way the customer can see the paint color and then they can actually see it on a piece of clear acrylic so that they can really get an idea of what they're looking at. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and make an updated one for my shop today. And I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. Here's another piece of scrap acrylic that I was just playing around with earlier today. Um, these are some of my new colors and I'm so excited about them. So yeah, let's jump on in. The first thing you'll need for this is just an 8x10 piece of clear acrylic. And then of course you will need some paint. These are the two brands that I use in my shop now. This is the Folk Art brand. 
And then this is the one that I got at Lowe's today. So this is called Valspar and it is literally like house paint. Like if you're going to paint your wall, this is the paint you would use. But um, I'll let you guys see a few of these here. Some of my newer colors that I was playing with, like all four of these are all the Valspar paint and it looks so good, you guys. That's literally only one coat and I did it like super quick and sloppy. And then I even tested with some polycrylic on it too, on these two. So you can see that the polycrylic will be totally fine if you do need to seal your signs afterwards. But yeah, I'm really excited about these colors. Whenever you go to Lowe's, they can make color samples for you. That way you don't have to buy like a huge tin of paint. So this is like an 8 ounce color, or it's 7.75 ounce color sample. And I think they're about like 4, between 4 and $5 each. So it's not that bad when you think of it. Like I think this is like 7 to $10. And this is, I mean, they're about the same amount as far as like how much paint you get. But I feel like this paint would last so much longer because it is so thick. And I only have to use one coat. Hopefully that's the goal. The other thing that I did is I went ahead and made a little chart here for where I want to put each color and then the name of that color of paint so that I can um, just lay this underneath the clear acrylic and then I'm going to use it kind of as a guide like that. Of course I'm going to take off this protective layer here that way you can see this behind. I went ahead and cut this piece of paper to be 8 by 10 and I just sectioned out. I have 28 paint colors so I went ahead and sectioned it out and measured it all out to where they would be evenly placed on the acrylic. Um, and then I'm going to go in after I finish with um, applying all the paint and after it dries probably tomorrow I'll take a really nice picture of it I'll upload it into Canva and put the names of the paint that way um, I think I feel like that's the best way to do it to make it look the neatest that's what I did last time so this one I didn't actually write on the acrylic I just took a picture of this uploaded it into Canva and then I put the names next to it I think I'm gonna do that again because I did like the way that looked Now we're going to go ahead and peel this protective layer off of the acrylic piece. I did want to tell you guys that whenever I was filming today at Lowe's, I was so nervous. I don't know if that is for me. <laughs> filming in public is so nerve wracking. Everyone was looking at me and the guy who was helping me like get the paint, he was an older guy. And he asked me, he's like, are you doing a documentary? I was like, oh no, sir, I just, I have a YouTube channel. and. I'm bringing my subscribers along with me today and he was like oh that's cool and just started asking about my business and all that so I mean it was kind of cool like to talk about everything but I just felt like everyone was staring at me when I had my camera out and it was nerve-wracking I don't know if I'm a vlogger or not but <laughs> it was I mean it was nice though to like actually be able to have footage from inside the store um, but yeah, I don't know if I am of the vlogging type. Maybe it'll grow on me and I won't be so nervous. I was probably just like the awkward girl and no one was probably even noticing me. But of course, I was probably just thinking everyone was staring at me when they really weren't. But yeah, <laughs> but hopefully I'll get better at it and more comfortable. I can take you guys along with me when I do stuff like that more. All right, so what we're going to do here is take the little chart that I made and just put it right underneath the acrylic. So now we know where exactly to paint each color. I'm going to take a half inch foam brush and apply each of the paint colors to the spots where I want them to be.
so now we have that first row done, we're gonna move on to the next row. color chart. I really like the way that it turned out and I'm happy with the placement of where I put each color. I think it's going to look really good once it dries. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and then probably tomorrow I'll come in and take some photos of it and then get it uploaded into Canva and add the name of each color to the photo. I love the way this turned out. I've got all my neutrals in there and then some pops of color too. These two are new and I absolutely love them. And then this one here, it's called Cherry Taupe. That one's a Valspar one as well. So pretty, especially for wedding stuff. That's gonna look really good. And then I have the Berry Wine and the Emerald Green here. Those two are really pretty as well. Then I have Eucalyptus, love that. So yeah, you guys, this is my color chart. I'll try to link as many of these colors as I can. If y'all have any questions of the name of a color or anything, just comment down below and I will let you know what the name is. I also wanted to show you guys the new sign stands that I'm adding into my shop this year. So I have this one here. This is a walnut stand and then this is a beechwood stand. So these are for table numbers, so like five by seven table numbers. 8x10 wedding signs or like baby name signs that I do and then 11x14 as well. This one might be a little bit too small for the 11x14. I'm waiting on my 11x14s to get here so I can test it out but I know this one would definitely work. Those are my wood options and then these are my acrylic options. So I've had this one for a while in my shop. This is just a regular acrylic stand, pretty basic that you see a lot of people sell. And then this is my more modern touch. So you've probably seen these used on my most recent videos. I've been using these as my sign stands for my wedding signs that I've been doing lately. These are acrylic and they're just like these little pieces here that you put on the bottom of the stand just to hold it up. So I think these are absolutely beautiful. So modern and cute. Those are the clear ones, and then these are the white ones that I have. So same thing here. They um, just hold up the sign the same way. So you just put one on each side of the sign. Very cute. So I made a graphic for those because I'm going to be selling my stands separately from my actual signs. Um, 
because I do have so many options, I'm going to make a listing for wood stands, and then I'll make another listing for acrylic stands. Um, but I went ahead and made the graphics for these, and so yeah, I'm going to be adding those in soon. I'm also going to be having um, all new wedding stuff in my shop, so I've been working on a lot of listings for that stuff, um, which y'all, I love everything I do, but doing listings is my least favorite thing on the whole planet. It takes up so much of my brain to like think of everything that I need to put in there. So I have to like jot down notes about everything. It's just like overwhelming sometimes because especially when you have a lot of new items, like I think I'm adding like between 15 and 20 new items to my shop. When you have so many listings to do, I have to space them out because I just like get mind boggled after a little while trying to make sure I have every little detail in, in the description box, make sure pricing is competitive, SEO, um, tags, titles, all the things. Sometimes it's a little too much, but I have gotten, I think I've gotten like 10 or 15 already done. So that's really nice. That's the kind of stuff I have been doing behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, so now I'm actually going to go ahead and start making like some thank you stickers, printing out thank you stickers, um, getting things ready that I can get ready ahead of time. So all of my items are made to order, which basically means like I can't make it until someone orders it because they're all fully customizable, the things that I do. So I like to go ahead and do ahead of time the things that I can. So with my baby milestone orders, I have these canvas bags that I send, I'll put a little picture here, these canvas bags that I send out with um, the baby milestones. And so I'm gonna go ahead and make some of those. That way I'll have them done and in stock and ready to go. I did do inventory yesterday. So I went through all of my things, all my vinyl, all of my paint, um, all my acrylic pieces. And I placed a huge order of acrylic this morning. I have everything on the way to fully stock my shop. So that's really good. And then really the only other things I need to do is I need to go in and add the names of my new paint colors into my existing listings that I had from before, my old ones. That way all of those names are in there. I have decided to take out a few things from my shop. Things I just don't want to sell anymore or things that I just like didn't sell that great or maybe just don't want to make anymore. Um, I feel like you're graced to do what you are passionate about and if there's certain items that you don't love making don't make yourself do it like if, if there's something that you've made a million times and you're like i don't want to make this anymore then don't make it anymore even if it is a, a good seller for you like my um tiny human car decal that has been my best seller since day one of my shop and I'm just tired of making it. I know that sounds really bad, but right now I'm not gonna renew that listing because I'm just not that into it right now. I'm really into doing wedding stuff and things like that. And so I just really wanna go full force acrylic and kind of leave the decals behind. Um, but we'll see, I could relist that at any time and I know it's going to sell really good. But for now, I'm just going to let it be. I'm going to go ahead and start on a little bit of computer work now. It's getting kind of late tonight, so I'm going to wrap this up here pretty soon. But I wanted to go ahead and get a jump start on adding the names of the paint colors into some of my existing listings and my new listings as well. a few of the graphics that I've been working on. I do all of the graphics for my shop in Canva. If you don't have Canva or PicMonkey or something like that, you really should check it out because it's a really easy way to make graphics for your shop and just to make things look a little bit more professional. 
So here's the graphic I made for my acrylic stands listing. I have each of the examples here of what the stands look like with the sign attached. Then I have here the um, what the stands look like separately. And then this is the one that I made for the wooden stands. I have the sizing here of how big the stands are. And then just an example of what they look like with the sign attached. This is another graphic I made for my Instagram. Just letting all of my customers know that they can check out my shop on Instagram. This is my font colors graphic. So I have here all of the font colors that I offer in my shop. And then this is just a graphic that I made to put on all of my sign listings, letting my customers know that the stand that they see in the photo is not included, that they have to go to a separate listing in order to choose their stand and add it to their order. So yeah, I just wanted to show you guys those graphics and, and just to let you guys know what I use to make the graphics for my shop. All right, you guys, I am all done for tonight. Thank you for tagging along with me today. I just wanted to make a quick little video bringing you guys along with me as I prepare to reopen my Etsy shop soon. I am shooting for March 1st, so that is exactly a week from today, and I think I'm going to be ready, so I'm pretty sure March 1st will be my day. I am still doing my wedding series right now, but I wanted to go ahead and throw out another video for you guys that wasn't wedding related because I know not everybody is into the whole wedding thing, so um, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and put another video out for you guys real quick. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like it, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you here. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you soon. Bye!